Yeah, this is London Calling by The Clash. And um, I remember all of us, myself, Nick Ritchie and Sean, kind of watching this video when we were younger. And like, um, we all, all wanted to go and buy suits, like The Clash are wearing in this video. And I kind of went and bought one. And I, I looked, I looked more like a kind of um, somebody who had just come out of World War II, looked like I was demobbed or something. I didn't look cool at all. And um, yeah, I just love this video because like it's just really grim and it's kind of it's, it's a wee bit kind of they want to get some kind of post-apocalyptic kind of vibe to it and all that kind of rubbish. But I think it kind of works and they just look like you know they look like some kind of I don't know 50s kind of gangster mob or something. I just remember thinking how cool the Clash were because they were supposed to be a punk band, but kind of you know they look as if they're kind of standing in some kind of gangster period piece. So. I realised what cool chaps the Clash were at that point because they kind of they could transcend anything. So this is London Calling by the Clash. Uh, this is Seven Seas by Echo and the Bunny Men. Uh, Echo and the Bunny Men were the first group I went to see live. Uh, myself, Sean, and Richie went to see them in Bristol Colson Hall um, when they were doing the Ocean Rain tour. And um, so that's why Echo and the Bunny Men always got like you know I got. A lot of time from because it's a lot of memories, a lot of memories, man. And um, I love this song. It's just beautiful. It's really kind of naive sounding, and it's just like it's just beautiful. And uh, I don't know if I can remember rightly, but I think Ian McCulloch is a bit dragged up in this video. I think he is, anyway. Uh, he looks cool as fuck. He looks really, really cool. Uh, Ian McCulloch and Nicky Wire are two of the only men in rock that can actually pull off that androgynous vibe quite successfully. So uh, this is Seven Seas by Echo and the Bunnymen. This is um, quite a simple reason for choosing this video, really. It's Good Fortune by PJ Harvey. Uh, I think she looks absolutely stonking in this video. She looks beautiful. I just like, I just, she's got one of my favorite voices. I just like, you know, I just love the way she sings. Like, she kind of, sometimes she's just really monotone and then sometimes she just just lets go of her voice, and I just love her voice. Um, and you know, she just looks absolutely stunning in this video. She looks like a complete and a kind of New York sex fixin', which I kind of like. So uh, this is Good Fortune by PJ Harvey. Uh, this is Could It Be The One uh, by Oscar Du. And they were really kind of like big band for us when we were young. Myself, Nick, Sean and Richie. We used to love Oscar Du. Um, I just have never seen this video, so I'm, I'm quite kind of like intrigued as to as to what it's going to be like. Um, I remember we kind of we had not we had we had an original bass player in the band called Flicker, and he was a real hardcore punk, and um, he had a black Mohican, and uh, I remember he was on his way to go and see Haskadoo in Stowell Labour Club in Newport. I remember Sean just kind of like patted his head and ruffled his Mohican out of place. And uh, that was kind of beginning and the end. Flicker wanted to leave the band because Sean had touched his like Mohican and made it look messy. So that's when Nick switched from rhythm guitar to the bass when Flicker left. So I kind of has to do always remind me of Flicker, the hardest chorist of punks that kind of like decided to leave us before we became this evil corporate rock band that we are now. So that's what has to do remind me of, and this is them. This is Nothing Can Stop Us by Sit at the M. Uh, and this kind of reminds you when we first, when we released our first proper indie single, I suppose. We were, it was Motan Junk and it was released on Heavenly Records. And this is around about the same time, Nothing Can Stop Us by Sit at the M was released on Heavenly Records too. And I, I just remember thinking that Heavenly was, seemed like one of the coolest record labels around because it was us, well, cool, obviously. Set at the end and flowered up, and uh, I was East Village as well. And I just remember thinking, oh, what an eclectic, you know, what an eclectic bunch of people on this record label. It's, it's the coolest. And um, this is an absolutely amazing record. This is an absolute genius record. And like, you know, you know, I just, you know, I just get a feeling if this song was released now, you know, it'd be a massive summer hit. Um, but of course, it was released like, you know, just about 10 years ago or something. And it's always kind of get a bit pissed off about that. It's a crime that a song like this was never a massive hit because it's just a pure slice of genius. So this is Nothing Can Stop Us by Sit Eddie Hen. This is This Charming Man by The Smiths. And 
It's just like my favourite Smith song. It's absolutely brilliant. It's just like, you know, just the lyrics, the music, everything. Johnny Marr's guitar playing on it is just amazing. And this is a song that always reminds me, um, this is one of the first songs I learned to play. Uh, kind of like, I learned to play every bit of this song. I remember there was a massive, like, rumour going around town. I was like 15, 16 years old. I was like, oh, James Bradfield, you know, can play this charming man, you know, note for note. And everybody was, like, really impressed by it. And, like, you know, I was showing off a bit. I was like, ding, 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 ba ding, ding, ba ding, ding. And, like, you know, I felt like the best guitarist in, in Pompton Fife. I was like, you know, I was the king of my town, kind of thing. So this song always reminds me of that. It's a bit egotistical, sorry. And um, <clears throat> just, like, just look at the Smiths and Johnny Marr just looks like the coolest fucker that ever lived. Um, so this is this charming man by the Smiths. This is Dear Prudence by Susan the Banshees. A couple of reasons for choosing this. Um, I think Susie looks amazing in this video. I remember being, I think it was about 15 when this came out. I remember seeing the video and uh, I just remember thinking, oh God, you know, she looks absolutely just beautiful. And I just started like trying to kind of um, get dates with gothic girls after that because, because of Susie in this video. And also it's produced by Mike Hedges, <clears throat> who kind of like, um, he produced everything my school, and this is my truth for us. And like records like this were kind of one of the reasons why we actually chose him to produce um, those two albums, because he's got absolutely beautiful sound and he's really good at using orchestration and stuff. And he's just like, you know, he'll just try and use anything and make it sound beautiful. So like, you know, it's a song, this is another song, a you know, cover of, you know, Beatles song, Give Your Prudence. You know, it's, it's another song that kind of evokes a lot of memories for me. So it's just Dear Prudence by Susan Banshees.